Hey, 42 here. You would think with all those furry-hatted guards wandering around, a team of 24-hour security personnel and her own private police force, whose cars are uniquely painted red by the way, and let us not forget her very own guard corgis, that it would be rather difficult to break into the home of the world's largest landowner and head of state of 16 countries. Surely only a highly trained secret agent could accomplish such a feat. Note this drunken fellow managed it without any prior planning, not once, but twice. This paragon of plundering is London-born Michael Fagan. Ironically, he is the son of a champion safebreaker, but that wasn't what persuaded him to try his hands at unlawfully entering Buckingham Palace. In interviews, he stated that he had no motive and he had never even considered the break-in before. He had simply gotten drunk at a local pub and was walking home past the palace at 7am when he decided to go for a stroll through the halls of possibly the world's most famous residence. Unemployed painter and decorator Michael Fagan made his grand break-in on July the 9th, 1982 when he was 33 years old. After leaving the pub, the sprightly drunk managed to scale a 14 foot high wall at the rear of Buckingham Palace's perimeter. A wall topped with barbed wire and revolving spikes nonetheless. I mean, I struggled to climb into bed at 7am after a night in the pub, so Fagin must have really, really wanted to get a glimpse of Queenie to clamber over that. He then shimmied his way up a drain pipe on the rear of the palace and entered through an unlocked window. Fagan then spent a whole 15 minutes wandering the halls of the palace without being seen. One member of the palace's domestic staff recalls seeing him, but after which she said she didn't think he was sufficiently suspicious enough to raise an alarm, so presumably one would have to be outrageously suspicious before the staff would actually do anything. According to Fagan, after aimlessly wandering the halls, he found his way to the royal apartment by quote unquote following the pictures on the walls. I'm not really sure what he means by that, but I can only imagine there are an increasing number of photos of corgis on the walls as you close in on the royal apartment. First, he entered Charles's room, but he was not there. Fagan did find half a bottle of wine on the shelf, which he drunk. In an interview, Fagan later noted that the wine was really cheap. Fagan then snuck into the Queen's bedroom, where he found Her Majesty asleep. Fagan later noted that the bed was large, but she was definitely sleeping alone. He ripped the curtains open and she immediately awoke. She sounded her night alarm for help, but the maid in the next room was vacuuming, so neither she nor anyone else on duty heard the Queen's distress call. So what did Her Majesty do next? Well, call the police of course. I'd just love to be the 999 operator taking a call from the Queen. Well, she didn't actually call the police. She called the palace telephonist who called the police for her, of course. So, what did Fagan and Her Majesty the Queen get up to for several awkward minutes while she was waiting for the police to arrive? Well, she, along with a footman, actually lured Fagan into the pantry with the promise of free cigarettes and a glass of whiskey. The Queen and her footman kept Fagan busy in the pantry with cigarettes and whiskey until the police came and he was arrested. So, what was Fagan's punishment for his dastardly royal intrusion? A lengthy jail sentence? Was he set upon by a pack of ravenous corgis? Nope, he got away completely scot-free. Surprisingly, at that time there were no special laws in place that meant breaking into Buckingham Palace was a serious crime, beyond normal trespassing. Fagan was let go without any charges because under UK law, trespassing is not a criminal offence, but a civil wrong. The Queen could have taken him to court for damages if she wanted to, but could you really imagine the Queen in court? She's far too busy deciding whether she would like her morning omelette made out of quail eggs or duck eggs. The Queen is also exempt from having to legally provide evidence, unlike us meagre peasants. Fagan was however charged for stealing the bottle of wine, since that's the only thing they had on him, so why the hell not? But the theft charge was dropped because the judge concluded that Fagan was not mentally stable and admitted him to spend six months in a psychiatric hospital. It wasn't until 2007 when a new law was introduced in the UK which made trespassing on royal or government-owned property a criminal offence. 
But this wasn't Fagin's first expedition inside the palace. He actually broke in a month earlier too. During his first visit, he didn't meet the Queen, but he spent 10 minutes wandering the palace's vast hallways staring at paintings. He then found his way to the throne room and sat on the throne for a bit before leaving the palace completely undetected. But these two Michael Fagan incidents aren't the first times that Her Majesty's private quarters have been penetrated. In 2013, a burglar broke into the palace after scaling a wall and kicking a door down. He made his way deep into the palace but was swiftly arrested. Also, in 1981, three German tourists camped in the grounds of Buckingham Palace the entire night, mistaking it for Hyde Park. Philip, I think there's some Germans in our garden. Off with their hands! I, I mean heads. Thanks for watching. Just outside of Munich lies a sleepy village called Fugurai, where the rent for a whole year is just under one euro. Meet the most audacious grandads this side of a Sunday roast. The so-called Grandpa Gang pulled off the largest burglary in English history. 